so what do you mean by potential energy it is sum of strain energy plus work potential for a given system you have to find out what is the strain energy and the work potential in order to find out total potential energy functional okay so once you get that equation what what you are supposed to do next once you find out the potential energy function that is pi equal to strain energy plus work potential you will get some equation for a given system now in order to have the equilibrium of the system what you are supposed to do you have to minimize that and we have learned about principle of minimization of potential energy also the one which is having the one which is having what what was the principle of minimum potential energy what was the principle of minimum potential energy if you have written it you can tell me the answer what is the principle of minimum potential energy so in order to explain the principle of minimum potential energy i took two bodies of same mass falling from different height the one which is having minimum potential energy will reach the equilibrium first okay will reach the stable condition first equilibrium state first so now to apply it for the problems we differentiate it with respect to the field variable with respect to the unknown variable and then we equate it to zero in order to minimize the given system of equation given potential energy okay this is your potential energy and in order to minimize it we differentiate with respect to the unknown field variable and then equate it to zero and we will get system of equations and then we will solve those system of equations to find out what is the unknown displacement okay what is the unknown displacement now so in today's class uh, we will move to the next problem on uh, potential energy determine the displacements of nodes 1 and 2 in the spring system use minimum potential energy approach so in the previous problem we used both direct approach as well as potential energy approach so in this problem we'll just use potential energy approach now so this is the system given to you wherein there are two springs having stiffness 60 and 75 which are parallel to each other and these two parallel springs are in series with the other spring okay k3 which is having a stiffness of 100 newton per meter okay and these are connected at this point okay and there is a force applied at these two points at node 1 and at node 2 so you are supposed to find out what is the displacement at node 1 and node 2 so let us let us say let us take u1 and u2 be the displacement of node 1 and node 2 so if u1 and u2 are the displacements of node 1 and node 2 what are the spring extensions with respect to this u1 and u2 what are the spring extensions with respect to u1 and u2 What are the spring extensions with respect to u1 and u2? That is delta 1, that is the extension of spring 1 will be equal to u1 because when you apply a force here, this and this spring will extend at a same length. Okay, same length. That's why delta 1 equal to u1 and delta 2 also, that is extension of spring 2 is equal to u1. But what is the extension of spring 3? Okay. So with this force it will extend here and with this force it will compress so what is the difference u2 minus u1 that is the total extension of this spring k3 so once you find that find the potential energy function so which is nothing but pi equal to strain energy plus work potential so you are supposed to find out strain energy for each and every spring okay you know what is the equation of strain energy half kx square then with respect to each spring first spring it is 1 by 2 k1 delta 1 square plus 1 by 2 k2 delta 2 square for second spring and 1 by 2 k3 delta 3 square for third spring and what are the work potential what is the work done on the system what are the forces which are coming on the system that is f1 and f2 so with respect to that force what is the displacement it is u1 and u2 so this is your work potential y minus because work is done on the system Take down this. 
Now what, you have, what we are supposed to do next? Once we find out the potential energy function, what is the next step? What is the next step? Minimize the potential energy function. Yeah, minimize the potential energy function. So how many system of equations will get here? So in the previous problem, there were three springs and three displacements, u1, u2 and u3. So we had three system of equations, okay, three equations, which you had written it at last in the matrix form, okay. So that is in the form of k, q into f, k, k into q equal to f. Now how many system of equations will you get for this spring system? Two set of equations. Two set of equations, okay, because there are only two nodes, okay, there are two nodes. You have to differentiate with respect to u1 and differentiate with respect to u2, okay, and equate it to 0, simplify it and you will get two set of equations. First you find the general equation, then you substitute the given values and find out what is the displacement u1 and u2. Can you do it? I will just give you two minutes. Differentiate, that is minimize the pot given potential energy function, that is your next step with respect to u1 and with respect to u2, that is dou, dou u1 upon, sorry, dou pi upon dou u1 equal to 0 and dou pi upon dou u2 equal to 0. So simplify those two equations, you will get two equations. So once you get those two equations, substitute the given values of k1, f1 and find out what is u1 and u2. I will just give you two minutes, let me know. Can you tell me what is the displacement u1 and u2 when you apply a force of 100 and f2 equal to 80? Got the answers? At least can you tell me what are the system of equations? Should I move to the next slide? Shall we see the solution? Next step? Yes? Anyone? Anyone found the solution? Let me move on to the next slide. Okay. So this is the equation what you have got. That is your potential energy function. When you minimize it with respect to u1 and u2, so when you differentiate this with respect to u1, so when you differentiate this term with respect to u1, you will get k1 into u1, okay, 2k1 u1 you will get when you differentiate this, 2 will get cancelled out, 
Similarly, differentiate this term. Okay, differentiate this term. You will get k2 into u1. And when you differentiate this term, you will get k2. First, you differentiate this term completely. Okay, so 2 k3 u2 minus u1 you will get. Then you differentiate the bracket. Then you get minus 1. Okay, you get minus 1. And when you simplify this, you will get this equation. Okay, when you take u1 common here. When you take u1 common in this term, you will get k1 plus k2 plus k3 into u1 minus. So minus is here minus k3 into u2 equal to f1. Okay. This is what you get when you differentiate with respect to u1. Okay, when you differentiate with respect to u2, so this term becomes zero. So this term also becomes zero. Only this term is there. That is. 2 k3 sorry 2 1 by 2 2 into k3 u2 minus u1 when you again differentiate u2 it will, you will be only getting 1 so you will be remaining only with k3 u2 minus u1 equal to f2 okay equal to f2 you have to take f2 on the other side okay same here so these are the two equations which you get one is this equation okay other is this equation now the values are given to you in the what is k1, what is k2 and what is k3, f1 and f2 is given, substitute those values. When you substitute, you will get this. So when you substitute, you will get the first equation as 235u1 minus 100u2 equal to 100 and the second, second equation as minus 100u1 plus 100u2 equal to 0. When you solve this both simultaneously, both the equations are written here. Okay. Both the equations are written here. When you solve this both simultaneously, so you will get u1 equal to 1.33 mm. So once you get u1, substitute u1 in any of these two equations, you will get u2 as 2.133 mm. Okay, got it, everyone? This is how you solve problems using potential energy approach. First, you have to find the potential energy function that is pi which is given by strain energy plus work potential okay for the given system of uh, springs okay then minimize that given system in order to minimize it you have to differentiate with respect to the nodes node displacements if there is two nodes displacement with respect to first node and the second node minimize it if there are three nodes again you minimize it with respect to all those three nodes you will get the number of equations based on number of nodes when you solve the system of equations, you will get the displacements u1 and u2. Got it everyone? Yes? Yes sir. Okay. Now I will give you one more question. Okay. After this, I will just wait for two minutes till then you can take down this. I want you to solve that question on your own completely. Let me know once you finish taking it down. Simplify and check the answers. Don't just blindly take down the answers. Simplify it by yourself. So any given system can be assumed as a set of springs and those can be solved using potential energy applause in this fashion. Any structure okay, can be assumed as a system of springs with the stiffness given for those springs and you can find out what is the displacement at 
each node. So you want a differentiation explanation once again. So when you differentiate this, your this is your potential energy function, is that right? Okay. So when you differentiate this, what you will get? This term, 1 by 2 as it is. When you differentiate k1 also as it is, you are differentiating with respect to u1, right? So you differentiate this to u1, it is differentiating as good as x square. What is differentiation of x square? 2x. Similar differentiation of u1 square to u1. So 2 and 2 will get cancelled out. You are remaining with k1 into u1. Getting it? Same here. 1 upon 2, k2 as it is. Okay. Then again differentiate with respect to u1. u1 is there here also. So when you differentiate this, you will get 2u1. Again 2, 2 will cancel out. You will get k2 into u1. Now this term, this term it is as good as differentiating ax plus b whole square. This term is constant. 1 by 2 k3 is constant. Let me keep it outside. Now this term you have to differentiate. This term you have to differentiate. It is as good as differentiating partially ax plus b whole square with respect to x. Okay. Same here. With respect to u1 you are differentiating this. When you differentiate this once you will get 2 times of u2 minus u1. 2 times of u2 minus u1. But once you differentiate that your step your differentiation is not over. You have to again differentiate the bracket also. Okay. First you differentiate this whole term u2 minus u1 whole square. Then you differentiate the bracket. When you differentiate this bracket with respect to u1, u2 is a constant because we are differentiating it partially. So you this will be 0. When you differentiate this with respect to u1, you will get minus 1. And 2, 2 will get cancelled out. This is the term what you get. Got it now? Got it? Okay. The same with respect to u2. Okay. Same with respect to u2. You have to do. Then uh, arrange it. Simplify it and arrange it properly with respect to u1 and u2. Okay. Take the common term as u1 and u2 here. Arrange it for this case and for this case. Substitute the given values. You will get two set of equations. One, respect, one with respect to u1 and one respect, with respect to u2. Simplify those simultaneously. You will get the displacements u1 and u2. Okay. Hope you have finished. You have understood the concept now. Potential energy method. How to solve the problems using potential energy method. Now we will move on to the next problem. Okay. Solve this question. So determine the displacements at nodes in the spring system. Use minimum potential energy approach. Okay. So this is what is being given to you. So there are three nodes. So you will get three set of equations. First half of the solution is being given to you. So there are uh, two springs here which are in series and these two springs are in parallel with this spring K1 and this all three springs together are in series with K2. And these are the nodes 1, 2 and 3 and the force is 60 at node 1. 0 at node 2 and 50 at node 3 and you have to find out what is the displacement at node 1, 2 and 3. First find out what is the give potential energy function that is pi strain energy plus work potential. So strain energy it is very easy to write the strain energy equation. So half k1 delta 1 square half k2 delta 2 square plus half k3 delta 3 square plus half k4 delta 4 square minus f1 into u1 then minus f2 into u2 where is f2 f2 into u2 why it is not there here because f2 is 0 okay that term will become 0 only and next is minus f3 into u3 so once you write this you have to find out what are the spring extensions spring extension this is your node 1 and the displacement of what is the extension of this spring? So this will displace by u1 and this will displace by u2. 
so here there is a compression here there is extension so what is the difference this minus this huh? remember u1 minus u2 so how did you solve it in the previous uh, problem same way so u1 minus u2 the same now what is the extension of spring 2 only one force is there okay one extension only in this direction right at right hand side it will be u2 you can see u1 because it is tensile and u2 it is compressing the spring that's why here minus u1 minus u2 and same here delta 2 equal to u to u2 only one extension and with respect to delta 3 what is the extension of this spring u3 minus u2 and what is the extension of this spring it is only compressing that's why minus u3 so substitute to that this is what is the equation which you get um, then once you get this equation substitute what is the value of delta 1 delta 2 delta 3 and delta 4 okay delta 4 then minimize this equation with respect to u1 u2 and u3 get the three system of equations substitute the values and solve for u1 u2 and u3 i'll wait for two minutes and you solve and tell me the answers Can you tell me what is the first equation? What is the first equation? K1 U1 minus K1 U2 is equal to F1. K1 U1 minus K1 U2 minus K1 U2 equals F1 equals f1 okay any other students is it correct or wrong others k1 u1 minus so first equation is correct sir. okay correct right can you tell me the second equation equal now equal to f1 can you tell me the second yes. equation so wait sir problem Okay. Doing take it your, right now. Yeah, take your time, take your time. Sir, uh, K3 plus K4 into U3 minus K3 into U2 is equal to F3. Just uh, wait a second. I'll take the book.
What is the second equation? K3 plus K4 into hmm. U, U3. Yeah. Minus K3 into U2. Okay, equal to F3, right? Yes, sir. Okay, correct. There is third equation, right? That is third equation which you told, right? So is equal to F3. Yeah, third equation with respect to U3. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, now with respect to U2, what will you get? So when you are writing the equations, first write with respect to U1, then with respect to U2, then with respect to U3. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, how will you solve these three system of equations once you, once you substitute the values? How will you solve three equations? Can you solve it directly by using calculator? Three system of equations? Can you tell me the answers now? U1, U2, U3. Getting the answers? Getting the answers? Should I move to the next slide? Yes? Should I move to the Next part of the solution. Yes, anyone? You told me the equations. Are you able to solve it? Are you able to solve all those three equations which you got? Are you able to do it or not? Let me know. So that I can proceed and explain it to you. Yes, yes, sir, doing so. Yeah. So if you have three system of equations, right? Directly use your calculator. Directly use your calculator. Or else what you are supposed to do is you are supposed to write it in matrix form. Then find the inverse of a matrix to find out what is the displacement u1 and u2, u2, u1, u2, and u3. So since it is very easier for you to use the calculator and find out what is the displacements if you have three system of equations. So in the exam, if you will get maximum three, three cross three matrix final equation. Okay.
taking more time to solve so when you substitute the values of k1 k2 k3 and k4 and f1 and f2 and f3 what is the equation which you get first equation when you substitute all the values given values when what is the equation which you are getting what is the first equation what is the first equation So 40 into u1 minus u2 equals to 60. 40 into u1 minus 40 u2 equal to 60. Right. Let me go to the next slide. 60, yes. Yeah. Let me go to the next slide. So this is what you get when you differentiate with respect to u1. k1 u1 minus k1 u2 equal to f1. First equation when you differentiate. When you differentiate with respect to u2, you will get minus k1 u1 plus k1 plus k2 plus k3 into u2 minus k3 u3 equal to 0. I hope you are getting the same equations. So and with respect to u3 minus k3 into u2 plus k3 plus k4 into u3 equal to f3. So all these three equations are written here in matrix form. Okay. So k1 minus k1 and with respect to u3 nothing is there. So 0. Okay. Next minus k1 second term is k1 plus k2 plus k3 with respect to u2 and here with respect to u3 minus k3 so again third equation 0 nothing is there with respect to u1 so with respect to u2 minus k3 and then with respect to u3 k3 plus k4 so when you multiply this with respect first equation row into column you will get back these equations all again okay the same thing is written here in matrix form now substitute to the values here so that identification becomes easier for you. Now, how will you solve this using your calculator? Should I tell you how to calculate this directly using a calculator? Yes, sir. I hope everyone has a calculator with them. Just this one. Which calculator do you have? FX991ES plus? Yes? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go to mode. In that there is equation phi. Okay, phi. So in that you have four options. Are you seeing the four options? Are you seeing the four options? Yes, first, sir. First one when there are two unknowns. Second one there are when there are three unknowns. And third and fourth are quadratic equations. Quadratic and cubic equations. Here you have to select the second one two. Now are you getting the matrix here? A, B, C, D. Yes, sir. A indicates this 40 value in the first row and B indicates minus 40, C indicates 0 and D indicates this value of force. Can you just substitute all the values here? So 40 and press equal to. Your cursor will move next. Then minus 40 press equal to 0 equal to and 60 equal to you will get the first equation similarly minus 40 160 then minus 80 and 0 so this is the value of a b c and d in the second equation third equation a b c and d 0 then equal to minus 80 equal to make sure you substitute it properly then 50 once you do that, once you complete, then press equal to, you will get values of x, y and z. What are you getting the value of x? You might be getting it in terms of uh, fraction. What is that value? When 88 divided by 35. 88 divided by 35. So when there is an option called S, yes, uh, arrow mark and D, just above the delete, just press that, you will get x equal to 2.514 are you getting it 
Yes, sir. Then again, press equal to, you will get the value of y, 71 by 70, which is nothing but 1.014. Yes. Then again, you press equal to, you will get 27 by 35, which is nothing but 0 0.771. Mm. These are the displacements of node at node 1, 2 and 3 for the given system of springs with the given stiffness and force. So this is about potential energy method. Any doubts here in potential energy approach? This is how you solve problems using potential energy approach. Okay, It may be any given system of springs. Okay, You can solve using potential energy approach in this fashion. Okay. Any doubts here in this potential energy approach? Any doubts in potential energy approach? No, sir. Okay. So, I will give you homework problems, assignment questions in the Google Classroom. I will put the assignment questions in the Google Classroom later and you have to solve them. Sir, okay. share the, can you share the video yeah. in the Google Classroom? Yeah, any pardon? Can you share the video in the Google Classroom? I will just share the video in the Google Classroom. I am sharing the Google, uh, because videos because in the Google Classroom. Yes, sir. Yeah, I am sharing the videos in the Google Classroom. Okay, even uh, they are there on in the YouTube. Okay, you can go through those videos in the YouTube as well. Okay, I am putting the videos in the YouTube as well. I am directly putting the YouTube link only in the Google Classroom. Okay, you can refer that. Okay, shall we move on to the next topic now? This is your first half. There are still two topics which are to be covered in the first half. Actually, there are first still three more topics. One topic will get covered when we solve the, uh, when we move on to the other modules. That is boundary conditions. The other two topics are Rayleigh-Ritz method and Galerkin approach. So, Rayleigh-Ritz method and Galerkin approach will be it will be difficult for you to understand at this stage. So, we'll keep this two topics at the later stage. Okay. Now we will move on to the next half of the first module that is interpolation models. That is your third step in your steps in FEM. Okay. Third step in steps in FEM. What do you mean by interpolation models? So when you divide a body into smaller number of subdivisions, those subdivisions are called as elements. And for those elements, you have to define some function, a mathematical model. Okay mathematical model. So, that mathematical model can be in terms of either polynomial function or trigonometric function. Okay? And these interpolation models can be used to find out displacement anywhere in the element. If you want, if there is an element, 1D element, there are two nodes at the corner. There are two nodes at the corner, but if you want to find the displacement anywhere in the center of those element, you can use these interpolation functions to find out the displacement anywhere in the element. Okay, anywhere in the element. Okay, let me move on to the next slide. I hope you have finished all, uh, taking down all this. Right? Just here. Interpolation models, second half of your first module. The basic idea in FEM is piecewise approximation. What do you mean by piecewise? Small divisions, piecewise. Okay. That's why it is also called as piecewise approximation. Okay. So, where basic idea in FM is piecewise approximation. That is the solution of a complicated problem is obtained by dividing the region of interest. The region of interest nothing but your continuum is nothing but your region of interest. Your system or structure is a region of interest into small regions and those small regions are called as finite elements. And the approximating the solution over each subregion by a simple function so approximating the solution means approximating this solution of that subregion by a simple function that simple function might be in the form of either polynomial function or trigonometric function you should know how to write these polynomial functions or trigonometric functions so we'll be using polynomial functions over trigonometric functions because they are easy to solve compared to trigonometric functions. Okay. So, see here, just now I said to you, if you want to find the displacement anywhere in the element, then you have defined the equation for a given element. Now, 
you were suppose you are asked to find out what is the displacement anywhere in the element at a distance x in that element okay you can find that easily so there is a definition here the displacement variation in each element is unknown this unknown field variable is approximated by a displacement function called displacement model or interpolation model this expression in general is called as displacement model or interpolation model okay interpolation model so displacement variation in each element is unknown initially the whatever displacement which we want to find out the field variable is it known to us or unknown to us it is unknown to us right so this unknown field variable is approximated by a displacement function okay this displacement function is called as displacement model or interpolation model so for example u is the displacement you approximate u equal to some function okay here it is clearly written if it is temperature is the function you would assume temp temperature is your field variable okay t of x equal to some equation okay some polynomial equation so for structural problems u is the displacement right so u of x equal to a0 plus a1x plus a2y so on okay so we'll see how to write these equations for a given element okay so displacement variation in each element is unknown so this unknown field variable is approximated by displacement function called displacement model or interpolation model so these in equations interpolation model are defined as so both are almost same only are the approximated mathematical model or trial functions which represent the displacement variation within the element so what this equation gives us how your displacement varies within the element yeah, how your displacement is varying from one end to other end okay of the element so that can be given by using this interpolation model okay which are nothing but which is nothing but a mathematical model or it is also called as trial function so interpolation model can be defined as an approximated mathematical model or a trial function which represents displacement variation within the element we will draw the displacement variation for 1d 2d and 3d elements okay so it is also there we will derive it and once we derive it we will substitute the values of some function then we will see how the variation is okay for 1d 2d and 3d okay linear variation not quadratic variation we are only concentrating on simple elements so there are two displacement models usually one is a polynomial function other is trigonometric functions so polynomial functions are preferred over trigonometric functions because of its easy mathematical calculations and accurate results if you use trigonometric functions your simplification will be difficult for you okay if it is a polynomial function it will be very easy to solve and they'll give better accuracy if you go on increasing the order of the polynomial the accuracy also so the answer accuracy also will improve you can take down this now after this we'll see one more classification of elements okay now in the previous class when we were discussing about discretization process we learned types of elements that is 1d element 2d element 3d element and axisymmetric element okay so there is one more classification okay there is one more classification based on the equation okay based on the polynomial equation so those classifications are nothing but simplex elements complex elements and multiplex elements we'll see what is simplex element what is a uh, uh, multiplex element and what is complex element before moving on to that before moving on to what is simplex complex and multiplex elements how your solution varies if you increase the order of a polynomial we will see that through a graph you first take down this We'll see how 
if you increase the order of a polynomial how your solution will be closer to your exact solution how your solution which you obtained from this numerical approach will be closer to your uh, exact solution that is which is obtained by using analytical approach through some plots simple example of polynomial function general polynomial function is this okay a not plus a1 x plus a2 x square plus a3 x cube so on a3 sorry this is an xn okay not a3 xn an xn so it is an plus 1 x raised to n because it starts from zero here okay no it's correct only everything an and an x raised to n because x also is 0 in the first term this is general equation general polynomial equation of order n next slide yes Let me move to the next slide. Yeah. Now you have a plot, okay, showing exact solution and approximate solution. Okay. So when you assume your polynomial function as a constant term, only one term, u of x equal to zero. So this is your approximate solution that which is represented by dotted line the one which is represented by continuous line is your exact solution which you obtain and when you assume a polynomial function and solve it okay that is your constant variation so that is u of x equal to zero so that is how your closeness is there with respect to exact solution now if you increase it to linear variation okay a naught if you increase the order of the polynomial from zero to one okay u of x equal to a naught plus a one x so this is your exact solution, continuous line, and dotted line is your approximate solution. Okay. So when you use linear variation. Okay. Then again, if you increase the order of the polynomial, see the closeness. As you go on increasing the order of the polynomial, your solution will be closer to your exact solution. So this has been represented here with respect to constant variation, linear variation, and quadratic variation. Okay. Quadratic variation. You can just take down these graphs. This is how your solution will be closer. It is not exact. Okay. Even if you go on increasing it, it will be close, but not exact. Okay. That's why the solutions which are obtained by FEA approach are called as approximate solutions. Okay, not exact solutions. So this is your uh, constant equation, constant term, linear term, and quadratic term. Now, when to use this? When to use this? When to use this? We hardly use this constant term 
because it's just a constant. So we either use linear equation or quadratic equation or higher. We'll assume either linear equation, linear variation, quadratic variation or a cubic variation. And you assume a polynomial function. It means when you solve a problem, so when you find the displacement variable, so you are, if you assume this function, your displacement variation is linear in nature. So this, when you use a quadratic equation, it will be quadratic in nature, that is parabolic in nature. Okay, same with respect to when you use cubic equation and higher order polynomials, either it may be parabolic or hyperbolic in nature your variation of displacement variation of your unknown field variable in general if you speak okay now let me move on to next slide now so before we move on to simplex complex and uh, multiplex elements we'll write the polynomial functions for 1d 2D and 3D case for linear model, similarly for quadratic and cubic model. So these are your linear linear elements. So this is your 1D element. Okay. I'll tell you what are these two. Okay. These called called as Pascal's triangle. This is called as Pascal's triangle, and this is called as Pascal's tetrahedron. Okay. How to draw it? I'll also tell you that. And using these triangles. Okay. This is for 2D and this is for 3D. Using these triangles, you can easily write the equation for one. This is for 1D, 2D, both. Okay. And this is for 1D and 3D. It's how this, how you can apply this and write these equations. If you write this, it will be very easier for you to write the given polynomial function. Okay. Given polynomial function. If you have a 2D equation, so X and Y. So order of x and y should be same. Okay, order of x and y should be same. If there are one x term, there should be one y term. If you use this equation, okay, there could not be one x term and two y terms. Okay, that's why you use these triangles in order to write the equations, polynomial equations for a given element. So these are your 1D elements. So this is your uh, linear elements. So this is your 1D element, this is your 2D element, this is your 3D element. This is your 1D bar element, okay, this one with two nodes and the one with three nodes is a triangular element and one with three nodes, four nodes, that is one, two, three and four is nothing but tetrahedral element, okay. So how will you write the uh, linear equations, okay, linear models. Now, in order to draw this, these are called as Pascal's triangles. In order to write these equations, we use this Pascal's triangle and Pascal's tetrahedron. Okay, now in order to draw this, first you draw this, okay, first outer two lines, like a triangle, then one more here, then just draw these lines in this way. And on one side you write 1, x, x square, x cube, x raised to 4, and on the side, other side, 1, y, y square, y cube, y raised to 4, and so on it is, okay, and in the center, so here. When you move from left to right, so the x term is going, it is reducing. First it is 2, order here, then it is 1, then it is 0 here. So again here, when you go on moving from right to left, see here, 2, y raised to 2, y raised to 1, y raised to 0. Same here, x cube, x square, x, x raised to 0. Same, y cube, y square, y, y raised to 0. Same here, x raised to 4, x cube, x square, x, and x raised to 0 okay same case here so here only 2d is there x and y so here one more term will come that is z so when you draw this first you draw these two lines then you draw center line then you draw this continuous lines okay then you draw these dotted lines okay so you can see here if you draw this this for if you only consider this portion is it a tetrahedron is it a tetrahedron yes or no if you only consider this, is it a tetrahedron? Is it similar to this? Is it similar to this? Yes, sir. Okay. Similarly here, if you only consider this, is it a triangle? 
give it a triangle so yes, if you refer this if you refer this it will be very easier for you to write these equations for 1d if you just only see either x or y only this portion only this portion 1 and 2 so these points corner points are called as nodes here okay so only if you consider this part is it 1d like 1d bar element only this portion if you consider either you consider x side or you can consider y side only this line only this line same here also that's why that's why this triangle you can use it for writing 1d uh, 1d for one one dimensional elements and for two dimensional elements and this for one dimensional and three dimensional elements now you can see here if it is constant you have one term if it is linear 2d element you have three terms 1 2 and 3 there are three nodes you have three terms okay same again if it is quadratic you have six terms 1 2 3 and there are center nodes and these if you consider quadratic right if you consider it as quadratic these are your corner elements and these are your mid nodes that's why there are six terms same again this is your main triangle with respect to cubic and these are the nodes in the center so here this line there are two nodes in the center this line there are two nodes in the center and this line there are two nodes in the center like that got it so similarly with respect to 3d so you can see 1 2 3 and 4 if it is 3d you have four terms okay four terms again this is also main triangle now let's try draw this point this point this this z square right huh? here this is z square not z and this point and there are if i introduce here 1 2 3 4 and 5 mid nodes so this is what you get this tetrahedron what you get okay this tetrahedron what you get got it everyone are you getting it now using this we write linear model uh, quadratic model and cubic model for 1d case 2d case and 3d case so for 1d case see here for this a not plus a1x only this term next for 2d case u of x comma y this one a not plus a1x plus a2y similarly for 3d case u of x comma y comma z so here that is a not plus a1x plus a2y plus a3z so this is for 1d case you can take down this okay are you getting it how to write the uh, polynomial functions for linear model for 1d case 2d case and 3d case for 1d element 2d element and 3d elements for uh, quadratic we'll see in the next slide i'll move on to the next slide you will share the notes with you later and now similarly here now see here quadratic model it means your increasing the order of the polynomial okay it means for higher order elements for higher order elements i have told you in the previous class in the class, types of elements higher order elements are those which are having mid nodes so if you are it is quadratic model you will have only one single node in between so for a single 1d case only one node so if you consider this part you can see one so it is a not plus a1x plus a2x square right similarly for 2d case this whole triangle you have to consider okay these are the corner ones 1 x square and y square are the corner nodes that is 1 2 and 3 4 5 6 are your mid nodes you can see this x y and x y are the your mid nodes this is how what how you write the equation a not plus a1x okay a not plus a1x okay a not plus a1x plus a2y plus a3x square then plus a4 y square plus a5 x into y okay x into y is it so this is for 2d case quadratic model and as for 3d case quadratic model u of x comma y comma z see this one this triangle you consider now tetrahedron is it a tetrahedron so 1 2 3 and 4 see here 1 2 3 and your 4 nodes and the center nodes 
one, two, three here and three at the bottom. So this is how you write so here a naught plus a one x plus a two y plus a three z. So there will be ten terms in the equation when you assume a polynomial function. Then a four x square plus a five y square plus a six z square. Okay, plus a seven x into y plus it is written twice here. Huh? It is written twice. Only once it is. Don't write it twice. Okay, plus a eight y z. Okay, then a nine z x. Okay, a nine z x. Even you can see here as I told you, right? From left to right and right to left, x is reducing and y is reducing. Same with respect to z. Okay, see here x square. If I move from here to here, this is x square x and x raised to zero. Same from here, z square, z and z raised to zero. Same here, z square, z, z raised to zero. That is how you write. That is how you draw these triangles. These are called as Pascal's triangle. Okay, this is Pascal's triangle. This is Pascal's tetrahedron. Pascal's tetrahedron. These are used to ref refer and write the polynomial function for a given element. Okay, this is for quadratic model. Similarly for Cubic model. Here there are ten terms. This is what you get: a naught plus a one x plus a two y plus this plus this plus this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten terms. Okay. Same here. You'll get twenty terms. Okay. We'll see that in the next slide. See your cubic model. I'm not drawing the triangles, but they are here only. This is your cubic. There will be two nodes in the center. See here. If you consider only one D element, only this one. This part, this portion. So one, and this, these are your corner nodes, and these two are your mid nodes. Okay. So see here, with respect to one D case, u of x equal to a naught plus a one x plus a two x square plus a three x cube. Same you write it with respect to two D case. Okay. Two D case. Why this is important is because when you are asked to write what is simplex, complex, and multiplex element, you are supposed to give the examples, and the examples are nothing but these equations. Okay, definitions are hardly one line, one or one or two lines. That's it. But you have to write these equations. Okay, referring the Pascal's triangle. Okay, referring the Pascal's triangle. I hope you got it. How to write the polynomial function for a given element, for one D element, two D element, three D element? Got it, everyone? Yes. yes Got it, everyone. If you consider only one line, it is one D element. If you consider this, it's a two D element. If you consider this, it is three D element. Tetrahedron, triangle element, one D element. Linear, quadratic, cubic. Then again, if you go on increasing, it is quadratic or biquadratic, so on. But we are only up to cubic. We will be using, okay? Up to cubic equation, we will be using. Yes, sir. Okay. Now we'll see what is simplex, complex, and multiplex elements. Then we'll wind up today's class. Okay. Wind up today's class. Now. So there is one more classification of elements. As we have studied the classification as 1D, 2D, 3D, and axisymmetric element. There is one more classification, which is called as simplex elements, complex elements, and multiplex elements. So what are simplex elements? Those which contain only constant and linear terms. See an example. Only linear terms are there. If it is a constant term, only a naught will be there. So the one element which contains only constant and linear terms in the equations. There is only linear linear equations, right? Linear terms in the given given equations here. So those are called as simplex elements. So elements with corner nodes are considered as simplex elements. There are no mid nodes. Okay, there are no mid nodes for simplex elements. For this three simplex elements, using these equations, we'll derive the shape functions. Okay, shape functions. Uh, these shape functions are used to find out displacement anywhere in the element. You will find out displacement using the given function. You will find out the displacement at these corner nodes. But 
in order to find out displacement anywhere here or anywhere in the between the element we simplify those and we'll find out what are the shape functions for the given element those shape functions will give you the displacement variation over the element okay those, those derivations are there so derivations on all these three cases okay for simplex cases using global coordinates and these derivations can be done using three different coordinate systems okay using three different coordinate systems one is global coordinate one is natural coordinate and one is local coordinate so what is natural coordinate what is local coordinate and what is um, global cause what is global natural and local coordinate we'll first go through that before we'll move on to the derivations we'll first identify what is global coordinate what is natural coordinate and what is local coordinate then we'll solve the derivations on shape functions okay so simplex element is only contain constant and linear terms okay complex element along with the constant and linear term it contains quadratic cubic and more higher order terms okay more higher order terms so this contain additional boundary nodes as well as internal nodes mid nodes are also there for complex elements so this is about complex element and lastly what is multiplex elements so these elements are those which are assumed which assume interpolation model consists of higher order terms so here also it d consists of higher order terms like complex element but the only difference is the boundaries as shown here for a simple rectangle element the boundaries are parallel to the coordinate given coordinate axis okay the boundaries are parallel to given coordinate axis so such type of elements are mainly used to achieve the connectivity between the elements okay connectivity between the elements one element and second element if one more element of rectangle element is there so connectivity okay so if connectivity is there you can easily find out how is the displacement variation overall in in the overall structure okay so these type of elements are used in order to have inter element connectivity okay two elements three elements so on inter element connectivity so that will be achieved by using multiplex elements okay they are same as complex elements only difference is they are parallel to given coordinate axis example is rectangular element okay so this is about uh, the other classification of uh, finite elements which is classified as simplex complex and multiplex elements so in today's class we have gone through two problems on uh, potential energy method then interpolation model what is interpolation model then uh, uh, through graph how your exact solution and uh, approximate solution vary for linear constant and quadratic term then using pascal's triangles how will you write uh, the polynomial functions for 1d 2d and 3d problem for linear model for quadratic model and for cubic model okay and what is simplex complex and multiplex elements so in the exam when it is asked what is simplex complex and multiplex element you have to define it and write this equations okay write those write these equations okay write these equations so in the next class we will derive uh, the shape functions for 1d simplex element in terms of global coordinate in terms of global coordinate before that we will see what is global coordinate what is natural coordinate and 